Sure. Um, yeah. So it's really my pleasure to be chatting with you. I think it's so important for senior artists to share the experience and uh, the, the knowledge with the young artists. So because, you know, I have been working for video games and I started like 12 years ago. I find like the timing was good because the competition was not at high during that time. You know, and um, the demand for concept artists, it's very um, limited. But the number of artists who are trying to be concept artists are very limited too. Mm. So there's a balance, right? Now, like just every digital artist almost just want to be concept artist. Mm. And the market, it's, I would not say saturated, but the majority of demands has been met. So it asks the young artist to, to, to really, I don't know, use certain strategies. I always say it's mostly like hard skills versus soft skills, right? Mm. It's like how well you draw versus how well you can deal with people. Because video games, is just, it's a teamwork, mm. right? Yeah. Can, yeah. Do you want to talk, I guess, like even rolling it back like a little bit further, right? Like how, how did you get? to any kind of competency competency to get a job in the field like that's you know i got yeah yeah like i i started to take art classes when i was a kid mm -hmm. like because my my grandfather he was a chinese calligrapher so since i was a little girl like he was uh, teaching me how you know to select a good brush to do certain type of calligraphy and how you know to mix the ink and everything so like since my childhood i was very into art mm. and uh, during my elementary school until uh, high school i just kept taking art classes including like watercolor acrylic oil painting like all those traditional art medium actually i, I learned all of those and then it's the point of choosing you know like it's in, I live in Quebec, Quebec, Canada, and we have a different education system. It's more like um, like you have two to three years of pre-university where you can choose a major, like you want to go into art, science, or like finance or literature. Mm -hmm. So that's where I really made a decision that, okay, I'm going to go to the professional side of being an artist. So that's where I got like a serious training, like academic training about art. Um, and I, I learned all of the digital medium there, like uh, Photoshop, 3D Max, you know, like uh, we, we learned all the basics in the class. And then I went to university to do uh, film animation. That's why I realized I have no talent in animation at all. <laughs> I hated to do my final project, such a suffering. I'm like, I don't want to do animation anymore, it's done. Mm -hmm. And, but during my university years, I just find my, my love for painting is growing. So I start to look into like different uh, uh, digital art like communities, online communities. During that time, we had CG Talk, like CG Society, it's old platform. Um, I, I met a lot of artists there and uh, people are showing like their uh, tutorials and their own tricks. That time, like the, the resource you can get is very limited. It's not, not like nowadays, you go to Gumroad and Paychon, it's like all the artists are showing and sharing. It, it was completely different thing. And uh, I, I was trying to figure out what's the difference between concept art and matte painting. And I had no teacher who, who could answer me, like what's the real difference. So I had to do research and everything um, uh, about the field. And then I graduated, I, I met my husband, Jack, and he was a 3D character artist at EA. Okay, and he was really the person who pointed like the door for me, like how you should prepare your portfolio and uh, uh, what, what kind of content you should be included in a portfolio to, to be a concept artist. Because concept artist, it's different than digital artist, right? Concept artist, you, you still have to show the notion of design and you need to show your process, your thinking process through um, the, 
the whole from thumbnail to black and white to color sketch to the final. You, you need to show to the HR, the recruiters or your future potential art directors that you are not only uh, capable of drawing, but you are someone who's capable of thinking, like the rational thinking part too. So like I, I did my portfolio with his advice for six months and then I start to apply everywhere and I have no answer. That's such a, you know, like depressing period, especially like you you work so hard, like every day, you know, after the full-time job, I had a, a let's say <laughs> boring full-time job. So I put all my passion and my energy during my evenings to do this portfolio. Then you think you're ready. You're like, yes, I'm going to apply. I think I got a chance and no response like whatsoever. <laughs> so it was like hard, you know, you were counting days. You're always checking your phone, checking your emails, nothing. And then we had this uh, uh, like a digital art conference in Montreal. It was an international event, right? We invited a lot of like well-known speakers to Montreal to do their a workshop and to share their experience, their techniques. And they also had a section which is job fair section where they invited like a lot of local studios um, to chat with different young artists in the city. Mm. So like Jack is like, don't we have to go there? It's like that that's a chance for you. So, you know, like during that time we didn't have smartphone. It's like dialing, you know, those numbers you have to push the buttons on your phone. Mm. No smartphone, no iPad, no whatsoever. So actually, be because I did all my art school stuff, I had this habit of printing out all my artworks and putting a binder. So I actually did have a physical portfolio that I was carrying with me. Then I carried this with me, I went to the job fair. Right? And then like I see all the other young artists was holding a CD. And you know what happened? It's like, like the recruiter would just tell them like, thank you so much, put your CD on the desk and we'll look at it when we go back to the studio. Mm -hmm. So I was like the only one who was showing my work around and chatting. I had so much momentum, so much fun. And I was able to point my thumbnails and talk through my process, you know, like that evening was so much fun. It's like, I, I just felt the spotlight was, I was under the spotlight, right? Mm -hmm. And then like, okay, the, the evening ended. So everything goes back to normal. The next day I wake up, I, I go to my boring daytime job. Two days after I got a phone call. They're like, it, it was Adults Montreal. They're like, oh, um, do you want to come over for like an interview? I'm like, of course, <laughs> yeah. So I went there, like the interview went super well. Like the art director did the same college major as me. So actually we shared the same teacher, we shared the same final projects, you know? So imagine the chatting, like how smooth it went. And um, they're like, oh, we, we love your personality. We, we like how you talk and how, what's your attitude, all that. But uh, you're junior, so we have to give you art test. Um, so I received the art test uh, right after the interview. It was actually uh, some props design. They give like three different topics and I have to choose one to uh, to make a design and submit it as an artist. And I was thinking, right? Uh, like everybody is trying to get this position. Like we were so many, you know, in that job fair. And I was, I was sure that I was not only one who, who was getting the call, right? So I'm like, how I can show them, I, I really want it. I desperately want it and I'm trying, I'm ready to work so hard for it. Mm -hmm. But I can't just do it verbally, right? I have to do something to prove that. So I was like, okay, they give me three different topics. I'm going to do all of them. And for each of them, I'm going to do three variations because that's all concept art about, right? You give choices to your art director. And they pick, they make the decisions, but you are the one who's providing the options. So I want to show my understanding about that right in my art test, even before they hire me. So they asked for one design and I ended up doing nine. And I submitted next day. I think I submitted in the morning and I got called in the afternoon. They're like, you're hired. <laughs> 
So, you know, like that day, I can still remember that day. That day just, it's like changed my whole career, right? That day you got a phone call and then you're like walking on the street. You're like, you just want to smell to all the strangers. You're like, you're so happy. Yeah, you just, you just see unicorns and butterflies. <laughs> Yeah, basically, that's how I got into the industry. And I, I was very lucky, too, because Montreal, it's really a big uh, base for video game like companies. And it was blooming during that time. We have uh, many like different big companies in the scene. And yeah, the time was good. And uh, yeah, and I worked for it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that it definitely sounds like it. I mean, nine versus one overnight, right? I mean, I assume you probably did like close to an all-nighter right i mean I, I don't know how long yeah, they give they give few days for i think three days probably for uh for you to submit a test mm -hmm. but uh yeah like what i the, the message i'm trying to get through to the young artists is just that the competition is so hot you have to do something differently mm -hmm. to get noticed right above and beyond kind of thing yeah exactly <laughs> i mean i i think I think there's definitely that and I, you definitely touched on it a little bit in terms of like the soft skills and I, I just, you know, college doesn't do a good enough job with the soft skill aspect, right? Like, I mean, you, you really need some kind of aspect with like Toastmasters. That's something that's big in the US in terms of like, it's a group of people, obviously pre COVID who would get together and then they would do public speaking. And so at this mm -hmm. point in time, you know, like you can't really bring like a physical presence to an interview. They're probably done something like this in terms of post grads and stuff. And you really have to come in personable and and likable and you know enthusiastic, right? Like all those different exactly. things. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, it, it's. I guess like, do you do you think that? As far as like the hiring and like post grad college, like obviously the above and beyond, right, is something mm -hmm. that struck you in that moment. But like, do you think that there's anything that you would like highly recommend? Obviously, now we're talking about NFTs, but like. <laughs> whatever six months ago the the golden dream would have been your job currently right and so like do you have yeah. any like recommendations for people trying to get into like your industry working for like video games currently uh in terms of portfolio i do uh recommend that you prepare like design packages like i said before um concept art it's not about the beauty of a final piece like no matter how that piece, that final piece is polished and beautiful, if you can't communicate the design ideas to your team, then it's useless. Mm -hmm. When it's beautiful, it's a byproduct, but it's not the purpose of it, right? Sometimes, you know, like the value of my work, it's just a level artist or a modeler gets stuck with the work. They cannot advance. I go to his desk, do a five minute sketch to unblock him. Like that, that's really the true value of your work. Mm -hmm. So I mean, in the portfolio, of, of course you need in the design package, let's say you are trying to design like a final environment, right? Come up with composition studies, lighting studies, where do you want to place your shadow or light and how the light is forming geometry and how those geometry it's leading the eye towards the scene, how you're guiding the gamers traveling through um, the engine, the environment, right? Mm -hmm. All that it's, um, you have to consider yourself as a bridge between the player and the actual game, also between the art director and the rest of the art department. So you're constantly this messenger. So how you can do this job better? Of course, you need to show different stages of the design of your thinking process. So all those color studies, lighting, and why you choose this lighting. I mean, in the studio, it's so important that you you can explain your artistic choices. If you say it's beautiful, I mean, they are all beautiful, right? Mm. Now how you can convince your teammate to, to follow your design or how you can convince the art director to, to choose your design. I mean, obviously for juniors, it's not that demanding, but for seniors, you should be able to lead certain design topics in the game. And you, you have to have a rationale behind all this. You need to do, like, I, I do a lot of Assassin's Creed uh, games, right? So you have to read about history. You have to read about aesthetics during that era. Like, all those knowledges, you, you, you just have to absorb them. And each project is different. So you never stop learning. But I mean, that's the beauty of it, right? It, like, with every project, just learn new things. 
and you put that new information with your um, existing knowledge to form a new package and you put a logic reason behind the design process and then you explain that to other artists the level artist the texture artist the modelers i mean it's it's fun i mean it especially with assassin like in the end you see a final product that the audience loves it so much you just feel so accomplished because it's a teamwork that's awesome i mean like so as far as like your <laughs> your take in in the job aspect right like are you creating the 3d rendering or is your artwork then getting made into the engine or like where's where's that interplay super good question actually it depends on which stage of the production you are right we have this preconception or conception period of the game which that uh, where you don't have a big 3d artist team Basically, it's the creative director, the narrative director, the art director, and probably two concept artists. Then you don't have 3D. It's basically pitching about mood, lighting, you know, what era of the history you want to do for this new game. And then there are a lot of like high-end mood painting where you want to, sh you, you want to make the, the investors excited, right? Mm -hmm. um, so that, that part, it's about the beauty of a painting, mm. right? Like Assassin, like, because our art director, Rafael Lacoste, our, our franchise art director, he loves oil painting so much. So we look at a lot of classic oil paintings and try to capture, like to, to study how those classic masters has used the colors and lighting to capture the audience. And we're trying to um, do the same thing with the video game concept doing that, the, the preconception period. Mm -hmm. So we can really sell our vision for that product. And as we move along, we are advancing the production, uh, we are going to have more and more 3D artists. They are going to build uh, basic 3D blocks in the engine. So you can have a dummy, like a little 3D model dummy that can walk through the engine, right? So you can have a sense of space, dimension, and how big is the map. But that time, you know, the house is just a cube, right? Mm -hmm. uh, a pillar, it's a- Stack it, of cubes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you just have cylinders. You have the, all those mm. primitive geometry everywhere. And then we just do, we just go into the engine, we do a screenshot and we path over those. So we're trying to dress up the scene, right? To, to give it a sense, to give an aesthetic to it. Then the level artists can work on it and during the production period, the scene is completed. Like when you see a, ho uh, a house, it's a house with the proper pattern, with proper paint, but um, it's still missing something. It's not the level of quality of a final ship the game. Mm. So you have to do polishing. Let's say you have to go through, um, you have to go into the engine with the level artist, you do screenshots again, but then you have to um, debug all the visual bugs on the screen that you see. Let's say this line is too straight, feels too 3D, that's too stiff. Okay, this area, you don't really have an eye leading element. The, the player would be lost to how you can give him a visual cue so he would know where he, he wants to go. Like all those little things that's during the production, we have to do, like we call it pent overs on the engine screenshots, like to to do that final quality tweaking with the 3D artist. That's awesome. I mean, I, I pulled up while you're talking about the game and everything like that, I pulled up the Valhalla post that you had on Instagram and like, you know, the <laughs> grandeur of it, like the just, I mean, it really is amazing. I, I, I honestly didn't realize like how in depth that everything was because I, you know, complete layman, right? And so <laughs> it, it's like amazing, like the, the time and everything that goes into it. Do you, do you have a game so far that you've worked on that's your favorite or like do you just love that series in particular or what's the thought i really really like black flag mm -hmm. you know like i think that's that's the game that really made my name like solid in the video game industry but I also enjoyed this production so much, right? It's just the universe, it's so diversified in that game. Mm -hmm. Those underwater scene, 
if you have a chance, like uh, you can check those underwater like wrecks of ships, like the, the pirate ships, mm. like those uh, visual like signature, like for the the black flag, you know, under underwater like maps. And uh, that's where also I worked closely with Martin Deschambault and uh, Rafael Lacoste. They were like, just like, uh, I was still like intermediate, like concept artist during that production time. Mm. And they just pushed me so hard. They taught me so many things for, for me to become the artist of who I am today. So I'm just uh, forever grateful for that experience. And uh, yeah, I, I also want to just say that to the young artist. I mean, learn, learn really hard, learn as best you can during school, but it's really at work that you are going to learn the most. Mm -hmm. It's by exchanging with senior artists to let them paint over your drawing, let them correct your drawing. I know some artists, they're very on the defensive. They're like, oh, that's my drawing. Don't touch it. I don't want somebody else to touch it. It's not mine anymore. But don't think like that. That drawing is not yours anyways. That belongs to the company. Okay, the copyrights belongs to the company. It's not yours. <laughs> anyways. <laughs> so yeah, just for your own personal artistic growth and professional growth, you really have to open it up. Let go of this sense of feeling insecure. When you don't want people to touch your stuff, it's because you don't feel secure. Mm. If you feel secure enough, just let them do it because you can. It can only bring you, you know, like new, uh, new way to look at your own stuff, right? It's like traditional artists. Sometimes they got lost in their paintings, so they use a mirror. Now we have the like the the flip effect in Photoshop, so you can you know, like change your way to look at it because when you look at the painting for so long, your brain get used to it. Your brain just assume it's right. Mm. And then you flip it, it, oh my God, everything's off. That uh -huh. started. <laughs> so like when you're a young artist, you need another pair of eyes mm. with experience to, to look at your drawing. And those are your senior colleagues. Mm. So if you want to go far in this career path, let them do the criticism. And as long as it's constructive, you, you really should take it with enthusiasm, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, seek the seek the senior expertise. Exactly. And I mean, how many people who would pay like for workshop mm -hmm. just to talk with a senior artist, right? Now you have them next to you and you don't want their criticism, you don't want their feedback, really it doesn't make sense. Yeah. yeah. This is, I mean, it, I know this is such a stupid take, but I can only imagine like how good it is to flip something in like Photoshop or in like a rendering program. Cause like, have you ever used like two mirrors and you look at yourself and then you see like the backwards version of what you see in the mirror. And like, mm -hmm. every time I see that, I like cringe a little bit like, oh, that's what I really look like. Like, oh my God. <laughs> and so it's like, I, I know it's such like a stupid take, but like anytime I see like the reverse of like the mirror, oh God, yeah, not, not a good look for me. Um, yeah. I know totally <laughs> such a stupid thing, but I can imagine in like Photoshop, you being able to really like pinpoint a lot more from that because I pinpoint a lot more of me. Uh, <laughs> do you do you also enjoy playing the games, or are you just like totally into like the design aspect, or or what's that? Oh my God, you ask a tricky question, and I think I, I hope my art director would never listen to this <laughs> podcast. <laughs> right now, it's like. <laughs> um, to be honest with you, I just don't have the time mm. to to play a triple A hardcore game. Mm. It's just so many hours that you have to spend on it. Mm. And I'm not good. I'm just super bad with games. <laughs> <laughs> and also because I'm a woman working in the industry, I get this question a lot from um, young female artists. Mm -hmm. They're like, I don't like playing games, but do, do I still have a chance to work for this industry, right? Mm -hmm. So I just try to answer this question at the same time. I think, when you love play video game and you know how to design video game, that's two different things, completely different, right? So, but you, you know, you have to know what's going on in the game industry. So my trick is that I don't have time to play it by myself, but I would just turn on YouTube channels. Mm -hmm. There are so many like game playthroughs, right? Mm -hmm. Like the first day the game is released, you have all those like t uh, videos like on YouTube popping up like, and on Twitch, like showing people how to play it. I mean, you just look at all those badass players, how they play it. That's all, you don't have to, you know, like 
kill, get yourself killed every time in the game and get so demolished. I don't do that to myself. I don't want to get demolished. <laughs> <laughs> Understandable. <laughs> yeah, so I just watch those videos. So I know what the competitors are doing. I know what are the hot, like top rated games, what they are doing, right? So I can keep up with my, my job. I know what I'm talking about and I know where does my game stand in terms of like the, the current market competition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's my trick. But I, I do enjoy play casual games on my phone, like Candy Crush, Angry Bird, you know, <laughs> like it's just some something very easy that you can play on the subway or on the on the bus, right? Mm -hmm. You, you don't need to follow that narrative because I have kids, I have a family and then I need to do my personal work and the commute, it's like before the pandemic, it's like three, four hours. And then it just, I, I don't have time for this. Mm -hmm. So you have to kind of set your priorities. Mm -hmm. So whenever I need to do an annual evaluation for my company and they're like, hey, how many games you play this year? I'm like, I, I watched many, I didn't play none, but I'm still good with my job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's my answer. <laughs> I mean, I, th I think that's valid. You know, I mean, like video games aren't going to be for everybody, but you can still enjoy watching. You know, I mean, like that's there wouldn't be such a market for Twitch if that was not the case. Right. And to your point, I mean, you're doing I mean, even if you don't enjoy playing like you're or, or even watching, like you're still putting in like the, the time hours into actually like learning about it. So, I mean, you're still an expert in the space, regardless of, you know, not playing any. Right. Like that, it's still cross compatible. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, you know, like the, my fun experience is that actually I, I had to do a job interview with like a company. They're designing an IP for a comic book that I didn't even read at all. Mm -hmm. I, I know nothing about that comic book. OK, I went to the interview. They, they asked me about all the concept art, the video game industry experience. And then, you know, the money question came. Mm -hmm. Do you like this comic book? <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, you, you know, I, I, I just said, I mean, every form of art, it's interrelated, right? Mm -hmm. It's just it, not reading this comic book doesn't make you necessarily bad artist for this production mm -hmm. because you will have a different take and different point of view for this subject. Maybe you can bring something new and fresh. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like, surprisingly, like, I thought the other person would just think, oh, bullshit, she just does <laughs> not about shit. <laughs> but surprisingly, you know, like, the person who was interviewing me, he's like, I think you're totally right. Because we hired so many artists who are so fond of this comic book, they, 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 they're just not happy at work. Mm -hmm. they, are, they don't agree with this storyline. They don't agree with that narrative. They are putting so much personal emotion and attachment into that. Mm -hmm. But at work, you, you need to, you know, you need to touch a bit because mm -hmm. hey, it's it's production driven, it's market driven. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, for all the people who are wondering if you have to know certain IP or you have to play a lot of video games, I think everything is relative depends how you look at it and it depends how you express yourself during interview. Mm. Um, I think as long as you, you can really make your position clear and you know what you're talking about and you are really good with your expertise, you know how to be a concept artist. Mm. I think those factors won't block you mm. of being hired. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think everything that you're saying is like super on point and it's just like, you're there to work, like not to be a fanboy, right? And so, like, if you're coming in to just like, <laughs> you know, get the inside scoop and like, you know, get to be the person who's making your favorite whatever character, then mm -hmm. you have just too much. You know, if your favorite character gets, I mean, I can only imagine what it must have been like for somebody who hopped into like Game of Thrones and like them butchering like the storyline or <laughs> not knowing that their character like gets killed or something like that and being like, you know, <laughs> well, I mean, just everybody died in that, right? So. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, like your your personal work, which I'll, I'll kind of pull up. So I have the the gay series that I'm gonna I'm gonna pull up so people can see, and let's do that full screen. Yeah. So it's the it's the eyeball with the Ethereum in the eye, and you know a yeah. lot of geometric shapes, and like uh -huh. you you have a, 
I mean, I, I find it to be like extremely aesthetic, but it's a totally different design style from, I mean, the castle on the cliff seems to be more your design style from like a work standpoint, I, I would guess. Exactly. Yeah. That's why I want to try a different, okay, let me go backward a little bit. <laughs> it just, since pandemic started, I, I, I have, I can save all those time from commute, right? Mm. Suddenly I just have a few hours more per day where I can do my personal work. Mm. You know, nowadays about uh, AAA video games, it's about realism, right? Mm -hmm. It's almost, uh, and the rendering engine, the technology, the new generation of the consoles, everything is pushing like for the realism. How realistic is it? And we do a lot of photo bashing at our work. Mm -hmm. um, just for the audience who doesn't know what photo bashing is, that you use photo base, use photos as a base, as a texture for your concept art then you pan on top you can use uh, like you can hand pan and then you can use the assets that has been produced for the game and then you can use like non-copyrighted photos as a part of your artwork and then you are going to put the lighting and the color on top of this whole collage and make it a beautiful painting in the end mm. so we do a lot of techniques for speed up the process I usually, for all the concept art I do for Assassin, usually it doesn't go more than two to three days. So for the level of, real, of realism you have to achieve, you just need to use those techniques. So I do a lot of super realistic stuff at work and I, I want to shift to something different for my personal work, right? So since pandemic, I started to do like just no photo, just free hand drawing, like selection and texture pen. I also limit the number of the brushes I use. Like sometimes we get really fancy with Photoshop, like with 56 different brushes. Then I limit myself to probably 10 and you just have to deal with those. Mm -hmm. So I started uh, first my Bunny Girl series. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, the bunny girl was like a girl wandering in a cyberpunk universe. Mm. So I started doing many like cyberpunk paintings with the bunny girl featuring in it. And then with the pandemic, this urge of traveling around just translated in my artworks. <laughs> then the bunny girl is wandering everywhere. <laughs> You know, like uh, I did so many urban scenes or landscape with the, with the bunny girl. It's just more portraying like, you know, this human connection with the nature and with different, uh, you know, like exotic destinations that you want to visit, but you were all kind of locked down in your house. So it really reflects that. So with the bunny girls, uh, I really get, um, much more experience with this new way of painting, right? The selection and more graphic stuff. So that actually involved to my gaze series. The gaze series, first, it got a huge hit on Instagram. Like, I don't know why, it just, I think I, gaze is just something that connect with humans so naturally that when I post it, like just, I got crazy likes of those. I didn't even know why. And people are like, okay, keep those coming. So I kept doing a lot of um, paintings for this series. And then it's this whole crypto art started. So after my first gaze painting was sold, I'm like, I, I just want to reflect the, the craziness of you know this crypto art Ethereum that we are living in today. Mm. I want to just um, just to mark this moment in my career, you know, with this series and with this, you know, this whole platform completely transforming the digital art community. Yeah, so it, it's really I, I I want to mark it with my artwork. Awesome. Yeah, I I pulled up a couple of the Bunny Girl pieces. I really like them. I, I'm like a big fan of like the style. I really like the gay series. Like I, I'm a big fan. I've come to realize like a lot more of just like a lot more colors. Like, I don't know. I think when I was a kid, I, not that I have any artistic ability whatsoever, but like if I was given crayons, I was trying to use like every color in the box kind of thing, you know? And so yeah. it was like, so like, I really, really like the geometrics. I really, I mean, the Ethereum in the eye is like really, really cool and definitely marks it. 
and like the bunny girl pieces i was actually going to ask you about that more like specifically but i feel like i feel like at this point like you could almost probably like sell those hats you know what i mean like they're, they're just like so <laughs> iconic and like you'd see you know um definitely something that you could imagine at like a comic con or or you know something like that and yeah but you know it, it really does show like a lot of wanderlust like i i mean i'm seeing a lot of people put out like books and stuff like i feel like you could probably do books of like the adventures of bunny girl or something you know like from cyberpunk to just you know i really like the the volkswagen beetle bus that she's standing on top of one of the pictures i'm like a huge fan <laughs> of it i really want to yeah. get the electric one um i pulled that one up too but yeah like do you think that you'll try and like pursue the series or or any thoughts on like taking it to another level uh, yeah, I think so. I mean, making an art book, that's probably the dream of every artist. <laughs> uh, I, I, I sure I would if I do have enough pieces for the Bunny Girl series. And I was thinking probably I can combine a few different series in my, in my art book if eventually I decide to, to do one. Um, it just, I, I, I love making art. And I do have the personality. I don't want to stuck with one style. Mm -hmm. You know, like before I did also a series called Edge series. It's black and white. And it's depicting all like the urban scenes, like the Asian urban scenes, but it, it's only black and white. So I, I was probably like, I was planning of probably combining different series in one book. Mm. Yeah depending on how much I can expand the Bunny Girl series. Hmm. And uh, depending on, you know, like sometimes, you know, we, we love social media, but your artistic choice is kind of influenced by the social media. Hmm. So some topic would just really hit a large audience and you, you didn't think it would come this way. And then you, you get all those likes and the followers and then you're like, okay, probably, um, this kind of subject is better for connecting with the audience you want to reach for. Mm. So I think there's a back and forth, this chemi chem chemical reaction between the artist and the audience nowadays on social media. Yeah, I mean, I'm while you're talking, I'm like imagining in terms of combining pieces, like a zoom in on Bunny Girl and like her eyeball has like the Ethereum logo in it. Oh, you know, like, good idea. I don't, yeah, I don't know. I, I, you know <laughs> I'm just spitballing, but. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I feel like, I feel like that's definitely something that like is, is an untapped potential for like a lot of artists in terms of, I mean, everybody's going to have their own pieces and their own styles and stuff. But like for yours, I think that like having like a storybook type of thing and having like different collections and yeah, I, like, I, I just imagine it being like a series where, you know, people are going to like follow along and want to collect the next piece and like all that kind of stuff. And I, I think mm -hmm. that that's like a really good, I don't know. I, I mean, I don't know that much, but. <laughs> it just it, it seems to make sense mentally i will call you once i decide to bring out my book you're going to plan this out with me <laughs> <laughs> i would love to help i would love to help um i guess so I, i'm curious like what what's the mental thought in terms of like working where you're working and then trying to also pursue this like do you find it's something that i really like to ask people because like do you really just get energy from meeting the demands of you know clients or your work life or is like do you just kind of like sitting down and brainstorming and seeing what happens like you know why it is um, like nft like this thing went crazy mm -hmm. within the digital artist community because that's kind of the ultimate dream mm -hmm. of every single artist you can just do the artwork that you really enjoy to do and make money out of it that's why like everyone's so hyped. Yeah. Of course, I, I would love just to personal artwork for a living, right? Um, well, half true, half false, because I, I love my job, especially the people with whom I work with and also the type of painting I do for Assassin. You know, like the type of painting for Assassin do is very classic, uh, oil painting oriented. And it's something I learned since I was a little girl. So I do have a lot of attachment to this style. And um, yeah, but still, I think a mix of both would be perfect. Mm -hmm. That probably you can work uh, part-time for like a video game production 
and part time, you can work with your own personal paintings, make a reasonable amount of income out of it, and combine both. Mm. Yeah, it, it's just, I don't know for other artists, probably yes, we all need a change. Mm. You can always do the production work. And I mean, think this way. I mean, even for the managers and even for the boss in the studio, how an artistic uh, artist can be fueled for the professional work. I think the true fuel comes through the personal artwork. If the person is truly exploring uh, the, the artistic expression of himself or herself, I think that energy would also translate into the professional work. Mm. I think it's just a win-win situation. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. it's a... Uh... Sorry, did I cut you off? My, my bad. No, no, no. no? Go. Okay. I, uh, like, uh, yeah. It, it's something that is like a big, like philosophical topic, and and some philosophy people people have like different aspects to it. But you know, it's like a either like a stool with three legs or a stool or like a chair with four legs. Like you have to have balance. Like if you just focus mm -hmm. on one, you topple over, right? And so like you know, you, you pre-COVID, I think from talking to everybody, it seems like COVID was this great time where. I don't know about you, but like my life has been school, work, and no pause, right? Like I never, like I, I know some people play hooky for a year and like hang out and everything like that, but like nobody, like for me, it was just like, all right, you go, you do good in middle school to go to a good high school, you go to a good high school and do good in high school to go to a good college, mm -hmm. you do that to get a good job and then you live a good life and like that's it. And like there's no pause, yeah. there's no stop, there's nothing. And COVID was this like great thing for a lot of people, obviously terrible in more numerous ways, but mm -hmm. a great thing for a lot of people to have like a pause, not to have the commute to work and to be able to sit there and be like, oh, like I'm stuck in the house, I'm bored. Like, what do I want to do? And, and you know, like like actually think about like where their life is going. And I, I don't think that a lot of people did that and like prior. And so this was just like this great pro of a terrible thing, right? Yeah, I completely feel you. Like it's the it's the same for me, and also it's a self reflection time, right? Mm -hmm. Before I work so hard, and now I have all those extra hours, and I can spend those time with my kid, with my family. You know, enjoy cooking, like enjoy. Also, I I, I have so many plants in my house now. You know, mm -hmm. I just take care of my little plants, little flowers. I, I look at them, and I'm super happy. I mean, all those little small insignificant things that uh, you had in your life suddenly you can really appreciate that mm. you can you can take your time to enjoy the moment and I f i'm really grateful L like you said like no nobody likes pandemic you know with the number of deaths and uh, all those broken families but i mean at least it do it does have one positive side is that now we do have this moment to take a pause, to take a pause. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 I got a plant. My dad gave it to me. I got a basil plant. I named him Basil. Uh, he doubled in size <laughs> and I gave him away. I literally, we didn't, I put him in front of the window. He grew, he doubled. I gave him away to my friend for a week and she killed half of them. And I don't know what happened. So, uh, oh, it was, no. It was, yeah, it was very depressing. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, but it's all good. It's all good. I'll get another cutting this summer and i'm sure that'll blossom too but um so i'm curious you, you mentioned having kids do you think that you'll push your kids into the art space or do you think that you want them to not go into the art space like what's the take or just whatever they want to do whatever they want to do you know i i came from an asian family and you know i don't know if you've had asian kids but for us it's like usually okay the, the asian parents that it's that you have to be a doctor or an engineer mm. or uh, uh, what else? A lawyer, you know, all those uh, prestige kind of jobs, you know, like especially doctors, like all my high school friends, like Asian friends eventually became doctor, some kind of doctor, you know, dentist, you know. So I, I was very thankful that my parents really supported me in my decision of being an artist, because I see my friends, uh, the, well, Asian friends were not Asian. You know, I have seen the, this kind of scenarios, like no matter what the race is. Mm. Uh, 
And those friends went through a lot of struggles with their parents because their parents have a dream which is not fulfilled and they want to have it fulfilled through the kid. I think it's not fair. You know, like the, the, the kid is the individual and he or her has their own dream, their own, um, their own life that they want to live. So I, I won't push my kids to do anything. I mean, of course, they are going to be very influenced by the artistic ambience in the family, right? Because I do art, my husband does art, and we have all those artworks, you know, all those collections, and uh, we draw together. So they can, they, they're going to have this strong artistic influence, but whether they want to push it into a career, I mean, that's completely up to them. Like for me, as long as you are healthy, you are independent, and you're a good person, and I'm happy, right? Yeah, yeah. That's definitely the important things. I mean, it'd be funny. It'd be funny if, like, okay, NFTs blow up, wildly successful artists, they go, all right, follow my footsteps, I'll make you successful. And the kid goes, no, I want to be a lawyer. <laughs> just, like, <laughs> just like you try and force him to be an artist, and they go, no, I'm going to go the exact opposite. <laughs> yeah, every career is useful in this world, right? Like when you're lawyers, mm -hmm. like, I mean, the FT is like the legal aspect is so great. Mm -hmm. So maybe we'll have a huge need for lawyers later. We don't know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh. I feel like, so like the, so my, my fiance is actually Chinese also. She's first generation. So oh, her family okay. is um, similar, similar. She's an accountant. And so not that they are like super pushed her, but they're actually like pretty, pretty calm from like a lot of other standards. And so, yeah, I mean, it, it almost feels like, like I grew up and, and my parents are like pretty hands off, but I played like a lot of sports. And so like the same way that like you have like a dad coaching like the team and then like, OK, like we're going to practice every day and we're going to play basketball because you're going to go be a professional basketball player. And like that like <laughs> level of like grind that you put on the kid, like it's almost obviously it's a little bit different because the dad is usually trying to like live vicariously through the kid and try and make him a professional and like uh -huh. grind them out. But like then it, I mean, from her stand standpoint and then, you know, as far as general norms right it does seem like that that's like a large push so i don't know i'm i'm happy that they're supportive i grew up with like no art in the house like my, my dad he like drew occasionally like very occasionally with like my brother like i don't know i like i just i think i just played with action figures and just made them fight all the time and that was like about it <laughs> <laughs> that's okay we have one competitor competition less right yeah yeah what yeah. if you ever get into it and you ought to everybody else <laughs> no, that, <laughs> definitely not happening not having very little creativity um yeah yeah but it's all good i so i'm curious so you mentioned that your husband originally worked in the industry is he still in the industry like do you guys do you guys ever like compete or like kind of look over each other's work or, or how does that work between you two uh he's more like a 3d artist mm -hmm. I'm, I'm more like the painting concept artist mm -hmm. so we we don't really have this huge lap of skill set but I mean, the appreciation of art is the same. So it's very easy for us to discuss like a piece. Let's say he's doing a personal piece or I do my personal piece. I can have this very objective feedback, right? Sometimes you ask your colleagues, you have you ask your friends, they don't want to hurt your feelings. They're like, oh, it's nice. Oh, I, I like this, I like that. But he's completely opposite. He just keeps breaking me like hard. <laughs> You know, sometimes on the spot, I get really mad and I don't want to talk to him like for days. And then in the end, like, okay, probably it's good that I have this person that mm -hmm. uh, who can be totally honest with my art. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so have you, have you ever thought about trying to put out like an NFT with him? Uh, yeah, we're planning something. Yeah, okay. All right, cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's on foundation too, but um, I, I just think we need something different mm -hmm. in order to stand out because nowadays it just, it's crazy, right? Like just before this podcast, we saw a blank canvas, a white JPEG got sold. I missed that. How much did it sell for? For Ethereum. Oh my God. We're going into a, the uh... <laughs> a blank JPEG. You uh -huh. know, I, I think that reality just it's confusing for many artists. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just 
Uh, I don't know. With classic paintings, you still do art history, and you you know how the value and how the perception of art changed through time.、Mm. But with this, with this NFT, it's just everything happened within few weeks. I know it happened like few months ago, but most of people we don't know until like a month ago or like three weeks ago. And then it just blow up so suddenly, and then it just become crazy. Like all the professional artists, especially for the entertainment industry, like for movies and video games, then we we look at those art, we just don't understand.、Mm-hmm. It's like I saw another artwork. It's like a blank canvas with a line in the middle. Abstract. Also, <laughs> yeah, it also sold. I don't know, like it sold probably like four or five Ethereum. It's like a good price, you know, like. Some of my my friends like did a super super complex painting. You know all those effort and hours went for it, and it's not even five or four Ethereum. It's just like, right? And then I think it that's the challenge for all the senior artists in our field、mm. because it's like we are sent back、mm. to our like young this young artist、uh, time of. Like era, like where you're trying to knock on the doors, trying to find a job.、Mm. Like you're trying to show your portfolio, you don't know what you're doing. You're like, hey, is this good enough?、Mm. Is you know, it's like that on the platform. Yeah, like with your artwork, like,、huh? is、uh, <laughs> someone will buy it? it it's good.、Huh? I got likes, but no one's buying it. <laughs> What's happening? Yeah, so I think it it made a lot of、um, artists like. Think about the the whole situation. It's just how how they should have expectations, how they should see their own art right now, and what's the market, and、uh, how how much you are going to earn on the market. Is it going to be the only reflection of your artistic values? Like all those topics, I, I think it's it's hard for for us. Yeah, yeah, I, I can definitely well limited, but I can I can do my best to understand. Like I, I feel like I can imagine that, and and I feel like it's one of those things where like talking to so like I I spoke to Justin Maller a couple weeks ago, and so he's like super high up in Divine Art, right? C at the front of his name, right? Like C Suite, and so. Wildly talented, and he's talking about people who are like starting out in terms of like making that next step, and just titans. You know what I mean? Like people who have been doing、mm-hmm. digital art. Like digital art started, you know, I don't know, forty years ago, thirty years ago. There, there's a, there's a woman that I follow who is talking, and she corrected somebody. She's like, oh, like you know, digital art's only been around since like Photoshop. And she's like, like、so、this this woman who's I think in like her fifties or sixties. She was like, oh, like. Honey, you don't know what you're talking about. We, I've been doing digital art since like 1970 something, and I'm like, gee, like I didn't even know that was like, you know.、Um, but as far as like the the scene goes, I mean, you're gonna have, I guess it's like twofold, right? We're not quite in like an abstract phase. People are still appreciating all across the spectrum, but at the same time, like you do have some pretty like fast and loose money as far as like crypto com- like crypto comes into play. And so when somebody spends four ETH on something like. You know the the quote unquote like for the lols right like like they're just、mm-hmm. doing it just as like a troll like just to say that they had it right and that piece might sell again for sixteen and you never know like which piece is going to do that I don't know if you've seen like the the crypto punks it was like one of like the earliest pieces that came out and those things are going for like hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars and it's like、yeah. two bit emoji like you know like it's it's, it's like <laughs> like I. It's it's one of those things where you know just lightning in the bottle and early and somebody decided it's worth about things are only worth what people are gonna pay.、Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, you're right on it. Yeah, but I mean, I do think as this like the next the next few months, I am certain, pretty certain that they're gonna be nuts. And I think that like right now feels late compared to you know two three whatever weeks ago. And that feels late compared to two, three months ago, and that feels late、mm-hmm. compared to two, three years ago. But I think that, like, in three months, in a week, like every, I don't know how you felt, but I am blown away. Like, every week feels like okay, this is the top. Like, it can't get like we gotta have at least like a slowdown. And every week it's like, nope, we're going to here now, and then we're going to here. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah,、um, crazy. Have 
do you so i'm a huge pack person i don't do you know pack the artist yeah yeah so the huge event coming up yes yes <laughs> he had a post talking about how like this is a different medium and i think that that's like super important in terms of what you were just talking about in terms of like people like yourself and other people who have been working in the industry for so long and obviously like really really talented and so i think that people have to understand just because you know you have a good social media following on instagram and just because you're really talented in like the 3d world like this is still like social media and like these realistically this is art social media right like known origin super rare rareable like you have followings you you check up on people i mean i check i check pax twitter almost every day and so it's like i i think that he's completely correct in terms of it being a completely different thing and I don't have like mm -hmm. the key to that, but it's definitely, I like to say that mimicry is, you know, pretty solid in terms of figuring out the best ways to do things. And so, you know, just watch, engage and figure out what they're doing that you can kind of do also. I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, you know, like the, the artists who have been successful for the NFTs, the style is so varied, diversified, mm -hmm. right? So there's no rule. It just, I think everybody will have a chance to succeed. Mm -hmm. I think it's just, it's important to stay true to yourself. Mm -hmm. I think the dangerous part, the tempting part is that you see this, like this artwork selling for so much and then you want to mimic the style or the, the subject matter of that painting. But then it won't work that way, right? <laughs> It, it works that much because it's made by that person. If you're just duplicating it, then it won't work. Yeah, yeah so, yeah. I, I think <laughs> I'm still reflecting on this. Mm -hmm. It's too new. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I guess let me clarify a little bit. I don't mean mimicry in terms of actually copying like subject matter or, or style. <laughs> no, 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 I, I didn't say that. Yeah, 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 no, I just, just because I'm, I'm thinking as you're talking about that, I'm like, uh, Okay, like more just like what what's getting them to the dance in terms of, you know, I, I had interviewed a guy who manages YouTube accounts. And so me and him were talking and like the I think that there's I think there's a lot of a lot more social media than people play into this. And I think mm -hmm. that just because you work really hard and are really talented, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to get noticed like you also have to, you know, I interviewed Steffi Fung. She goes live on Twitch and live works through different pieces and engages with people. And she's getting hundreds of people onto like her streams. Like that's super big because, you know, that's that interplay. They feel like they get to know you. They want to own the pieces. You know, they saw it mm -hmm. got made. And so, okay, this is going to drop on Tuesday. And so then, all right, I got, you know, the Bitcoin ready and, and I, or the Ethereum ready <laughs> and I, I want to buy. Like you, you mm -hmm. create that bond. Um, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I, it's, it's so hard to say because like, it's such a, I feel like such a bittersweet time because people are seeing this as like a gold rush and it is for some and it's going to not hit as well for others. And it, like, I, I want artists as a whole to do like a lot better than they've been doing historically. Obviously you, you've done really well, you know, like it, but like <laughs> for, for every one of you who has managed to do what you've done, there are a lot of other people who haven't, you know, just from somewhat luck of the draw or talent or just wrong place, wrong time. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think luck and timing also play a lot into it, right? It's just how many people can get famous and that rich and that successful within like few months, mm. right? Not everybody can have that. So I think chance and luck definitely mm. play a role into it. Um, so I think for most of the artists, the, the realistic approach, it's more like, if you can sell a few pieces, it's like some extra income that you can enjoy, right? But don't count on it. <laughs> you still need your full-time job. Don't give up your full-time job and start doing artworks just for NFTs. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. For, for you, obviously, working in the space and then having a couple more hours, like, have you had issues of, you know, kind of balancing your time between the two? Or is it just kind of like work? get everything done in terms of the house and then work on your personal art or like how, how has that been? Exactly. It's work, uh, housework and personal work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And I really enjoy it. And from, from time to time, I do take some time off the screen too. Mm -hmm. 
otherwise it becomes too overwhelming you know like like two weeks ago when this crypto art suddenly everything happened you know it's like everything just changed so fast everybody's poking you asking you for do you have this invitation and you also you're like poking friends it's like hey can you uh, connect me <laughs> and then you know and i just put on my phone i, I look outside of the window i'm like oh my god the sky is still there and you see the cars passing by and you're like okay all right that's their reality i i, I can still feel the the world existing around me mm. it just it's a super weird feeling it's very surreal mm. yeah and i think it's super important to take a moment like um like turn off the phone and mm. just step out and try to get some fresh air have some sunlight have a walk you know mm. just <laughs> reconnect with the reality a little bit i think it's healthy mm. yeah i my buddy's been joking around because you know starting my work and everything like that things are just going very well for me and so my buddy's been joking around about unplugging me from the matrix <laughs> I'm just like <laughs> dude just leave me in like I'm, I'm good but as far as you know like unplugging from like a day-to-day -day standpoint i mean i don't i don't know if you saw uh my 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 dog yeah um, oh super cute yeah sleeping already he's all day all day but he, <laughs> he gets very excited to go outside and so i, I like to take a break and you know give him like a, a walk and yeah because otherwise, I mean, every, you feel like you almost, at this point, like, I've had conversation with friends and they're like, how long do you think I have to like get into the space? Or, you know, like they're, they're coming also from, you know, a monetary standpoint. And they're like, oh, like, should I, should I get this or should I get that? And I'm like, I, I buy, you know, like the, the general norm is buy what you like kind of thing. And so mm -hmm. whenever I've like sat there and they're like, okay, I'm going to buy this. The amount of text that I've gotten is like, I thought I had time and like the price on that goes off or, you know, again, with like <laughs> hack coming to market with, yeah, yeah. like it, it's just, it's so crazy how fast everything is happening. Like a, a day, like when, when I plan something out, I'm like, yeah, I got like a week. It's like, that's a day in crypto art. You know what I mean? Like a yeah. day is like an hour. Everything is just rapid firing. It feels, it feels like, I don't know if you were around in terms of crypto, like buying or, or tracking, but it feels like, 2016 2017 like buying crypto and like checking my phone at like two o'clock in the morning waking up again at four like not on purpose <laughs> just not being able to sleep the entire night because of having to check uh, the prices I, i'm not crazy <laughs> to that point yeah yeah <laughs> yeah it might be just me <laughs> no i think a lot of people are like you mm -hmm. and sometimes you know it's like already us were like this sometimes i look at my kids i'm like how things would be for their time mm -hmm. you know when they grow up I, I just can't imagine how the world will be <laughs> yeah it just you know like our parents like what do we have been living through with the life of our parents it's mm -hmm. just too different right mm -hmm. the life between our parents and the grandparents are not that different mm -hmm. but those last few I don't know like 40, 40, 30 years, it's just, it's crazy in terms of technology and everything. It's too fast. Yeah. My grandma, I have a little bit of like a difference. My, my grandma is 95. She's wow. like, she's like a, a depression type baby. And, and so like, she like lived through all of that. Like, no, seriously. Yeah. Like, like she lived through the depression. Like she was, <laughs> okay. This, this is, yeah. I, so like the difference from what she grew up with, like my parent, my dad's born in 1960. And whatever, I'm 1990, right? So, uh, as yeah, baby, as... <laughs> yeah, I just look like crap. <laughs> um, yeah, but as far as that goes, you know, like the, you know, she was talking to me. She paid nineteen dollars a month for her first apartment, and it was a shithole. Wow. But like, oh my god, that that was how much she paid for her first apartment. I pay mm -hmm. add two zeros on that. <laughs> like that's like a New York City apartment now. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. We've already done an hour. I am really curious. Like, I don't want to take up too much more of your time. I am really curious as far as like stylistically, is it just a natural progression as far as pieces go? I, I want to pull another one of your pieces up. I did show the couple that I had mentioned, but then this crap, it's gone. Great. Okay. Up Uh, throwback of my personal cyberpunk digital painting featuring the amazing crystal D Faye on the billboard. Yeah. Uh, so 
you have such an array of different styles. Do you just naturally progress or is it kind of like this just strikes a fancy or like how do you go and, you know, start delving into different styles? I think, well, that painting was done before I started going to the more minimalistic, like the simple way of painting, right? It's just, I am a big fan of Cyberpunk, Blade Runner, you know, all those movies just inspired me so much. So, uh, like, when I made this painting, I, I just want to do Cyberpunk stuff. Mm. Yeah, and uh, it's just a lot of time <laughs> goes into that painting. As you can see, it's filled with details, right? I, I love to, I love creating this universe, but I've done another Cyberpunk piece too. Another one with a hologram. And then um, I kept doing more, you know, the industry looking like concept art paintings. Mm. And then I just felt I do need a break from doing like super complex paintings. I want to make something simple, stylized, where I can develop a more self-expression and share quickly with the audience because that painting you know, I, I can share one painting probably every two weeks if I work fast, right? But that that's not how social media works, mm. right? You you almost need to share things every day. Mm. Otherwise, you just you're you're left behind. Mm. So I mean, I I don't mind, and I do love making complex pieces, but I think for social engagement, it's not necessary. And the weird thing I have noticed on Instagram, you know, it's like super complex pieces. They don't get more likes than the simple eye-catching pieces mm -hmm. because people are scrolling like the phone so fast, right? Yeah. If there are too much details, like the brain cannot just register. Mm. Like, I think that's why the, the gaze series caught so much attention because people don't have time. They do this, oh, wow, it caught my attention. Like, yeah. I think that's a psychological effect. So I think in terms of artistic values, probably the uh, the cyberpunk would hold more values. But for nowadays, for social engagement and all that, I think if you want your journey to be easier, you, you need to probably try a simpler way and a faster way of producing art. Mm. There, so... I think that you're right. I do wonder how much like Instagram is going to lead to people's success in the industry because I don't know if you know him. Uh, I had to re-listen to him pronouncing his last name, so I'm going to butcher this, but it's Cornelius Domrich, Domrich? So, something to that extent. Okay. Uh, I'm close. Not great with pronunciations, but so he has pieces that he takes like almost months on, right? And so I think that it really depends pens but i do feel like there might be more appreciation in like this space for that kind of like really time consuming thing that you can showcase right like obviously th there isn't really like a set formula at this point but like he has had some like really successful prints one went for 156 ETH, i think and so mm -hmm. like his pieces take really really long he's uh blender or render octane the the one of the yeah and so he he was utilized as like one of like the screens like the home page on like the app or or on the program and so i think that there is appreciation for that more complex thing that you know collectors are digital artists too right yeah i think there's a appreciation for all kind of art form mm -hmm. and it's going to stay true like that for forever right um like the Instagram strategy was more before this NFT. It's like you are making, you're trying to have more followers mm -hmm. and more engagement without thinking about collectors because the collectors audience didn't kick into the scene yet, right? During that time. Mm -hmm. So it's more the, the natural progress of um, your individual Instagram, how it's indicating that, right? If for certain artists, the more complex pieces lead them to have more followers, probably they are just going to do more, keep doing the same more complex pieces. So for my own experience, um, not talking about NFTs, just talking about uh, followers, it's just um, the simpler pieces mm -hmm. have a much bigger hit. 
I don't know why it just it happened like that and um like the the artist you just talk about I think he He's probably few of the examples who made very complex uh, pieces and got noticed, got a lot of recognition. Because some artists I know is just they spend so much time on one painting and then it's not a hit. Mm. And then they missed one month to, to create. Let's say if I can pull up, you know, one piece of art every two days, one month, I have 15 chance to have a post that go viral, right? Mm -hmm. You only has one chance. And if you spend a month or two weeks, you have one, one chance per month or two chance per month. Mm -hmm. If it's not a hit, time's over. Yeah. And you know how fast everything is it's going, right? Nowadays, mm -hmm. are you, so, I mean, it's, it's a chance and every artist to have a different experience. So I don't want to say just don't make complex paintings. It's just for, for me, um, the, the faster, simpler ones went better mm -hmm. in terms of capturing audience. But uh, NFTs is a completely different story. I, I still don't know what can I capture the collectors. Tell me if you have any tricks. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Oh, yeah. so, so in terms of like a pivot, a little bit of like a fun question. I, I'm hopeful moving forward to be out of like a post-COVID world. Let's not say that COVID is here at all anymore. What's like your favorite thing to look forward to in a non-existent COVID world to go back to? Oh, first thing, I'm going to restaurant, you know, coffees, you know, we, uh, drink <laughs> with my, my, my friends, my colleagues, you know, and then I'm going to travel somewhere like, uh, you know, somewhere warm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 In the I mean, south. <laughs> I'm in New York and it, it was below freezing today with the wind chill. So I'm, I'm with you on that. <laughs> yeah, we have similar temperature. So, yeah, I feel your pain. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's traveling and going out, you know, in, enjoy everything. It just, I miss it so much. But I think the, the vaccination is going really well. Mm. I mean, at least for uh, North America, I don't know what about Europe and Asia, but uh, I think for States and Canada, it's going in pretty fast. And uh, I think the government just said, with July, end of July, they were planning to finish all the vaccination for Quebec citizens. Mm. Nice, nice. Yeah, yeah I, I think, I think. Biden's promising around like Labor Day weekend, I think, give or take. But we'll see what happens. Uh, optimistic, optimistic, hopeful, hopeful. And yeah. so now is like the fun question, which is a little more difficult, which is what do you think your purpose is in life? I think it's just enjoy every single simple thing you can enjoy. Right. It just, I think during the pandemic, we witnessed so many tragedies and uh, you don't know what's going to be tomorrow. Sometimes you have this huge plan. You want to earn that kind of money. You want to have prestige. You want to do this and that, but nobody knows what tomorrow will be. And I think it's very important to, to connect with the simple things in life, like the little moment you enjoy with the ones you love, and you know, like a little walk in the nature and just the fresh air, the, the bright sun, sunshine, you know, like those little things. I think I, I am still amazed by this whole like NFT, you know, crypto, like all those things. But I, I think as humans, we still need that connection to the nature, to the reality. Mm, for sure. Yeah. Great response. I, I really, <laughs> yeah. That's that's it. That's an hour and fifteen. I really appreciate the time. Uh, well, thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, you know, six months to a year with everybody. I want I want to check in. I mean, yeah, we'll we'll talk about you know the the book if I have any ideas. But I mean, your artwork's incredible. <laughs> you have a phenomenal career, and you know, happy and healthy, right? Going into yeah. the rest of twenty twenty one. Exactly. Like uh, I'm pretty happy. What with what I have already, you know, like I know so many artists trying to break through in this industry. And uh, I think I was lucky to, to have the opportunity at good time. I met good people and people always took care of me at work. And uh, I, I try my best to take care of my entourage too. Mm. So I think like 
no matter how how your name would be on the internet and how much money you would earn, being grateful to whatever you have already is the key to true happiness. It's just if you if you look at you know like the the, the kids in Africa or you underdeveloped countries, sometimes you know we, we forget how much we have already. Mm. And uh, I I I sometimes say I do a lot of charity, like not huge amount, but I do what I can just to help the poor the poor kids in the war zone or all that. I just, uh, you know, I'm a mom. It breaks my heart to, to see certain things on the internet. And we we have so much. I mean, living in States and Canada already is a big plus compared to other countries, right? So yeah, everything's uh, relative. Depends how how you see happiness and you how you perceive your life. I think as long as you are grateful, you have this attitude for whatever you have, you can be happy. Yeah. Well said. Yeah. That's yeah. that's happiness. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you. I, I Thank you. Six months to a year we'll run it back. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right.